in the you're going to make 5,000 mistakes, so you may as well start doing it now, you know, so it's uh, people, you know, that was the one thing I found with teaching, like people want to leave workshops with something they can hang on their wall, you know, and it's, it's really hard to, uh, to uh, convince them otherwise, you know, like uh, the importance of loosening up and not caring and doing a lot of beginnings. Pointed down and uh, show these are my patches that I've uh, premixed. And uh, the important thing, and like he he details in the Hawthorne book, is the uh, is color matters so much less than value. You know, so if you see, I've really basically only got the four the four basic values. You know, my white, my black, and uh, light middle and dark middle. You know, uh, so. If, if you think of it uh, more in terms of value than, than color, you're going to uh, have a much more successful uh, sort of uh, structure to the, to the work. So I'll, uh, I'll start right in with the black. So like that will give me, uh, give me something to, uh, to base it off of, you know, like this, this, uh, um, it, it just gives me a sort of a, I can't, I can't think of the word right now, but uh, like a, a touch point to, uh, to base everything else off of. And I'm, I'm really, I'm not thinking about it, that it's, uh, that it's a car or whatever that I'm painting. I'm really just focusing on, on the shapes that I'm seeing. I'm, so I'm really squinting down. And uh, the more you can, the more you can uh, separate yourself from the what you're painting and, and focus on the, on the, well, like I said, values. It's really all about values. What I, th what I think is interesting watching you already is that uh, the temptation for many of us is just to draw, it's just to draw in lines. And, right. And, and you're really doing it in, in, in almost horizontal brush strokes in most cases. Yeah, and that I'm kind of forcing myself to use flat brushes and not tiny ones, you know, given that this is only a, a little 12 by 12, even this is a fairly large brush to be to be uh, using on this uh, this size, you know. So I'm, ju I'm just dabbing in little little spots to kind of kind of uh, anchor anchor where my big pieces will go. Kind of road yeah, map. You're exactly right that I'm not like putting a line around things, you know, um, because to do that is to is to think of them as things, think of them as cars and objects, um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to pieces, patches, patches of value, which you know the same thing as patches of color, like because every color has a value. Um, now tell us what you were just doing. You were wiping out with a tool. I was wiping out with this. Uh, it's uh, it's called a Princeton Catalyst wedge. It's uh, it's it's a fairly hard rubber, but it works really well to like uh, kind of squeegee things. See, so it can uh, it can do that too. Um, it gets you right down to the the surface, you know. So it's like painting on the. Uh, um, I mean, oftentimes I'll 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 lay in a a total mother wash everywhere in a in a mid value turquoise or something and then I'll I'll carve back my lights with the uh with the the uh the, that tool and uh um the reason I'm not doing that here is because you know it probably takes a little longer cuz you have to wait for little things to dry a little bit or whatever you know so I I, I figured for this like my, my I'm not going to absolutely faithfully keep to it but my my mindset is literally like your your last stroke first you know like as i'm laying it in i want that to be you know like if if i'm successful that that dark area i just laid in there that's that's the tire of a car in the in the background will still be there you know i won't have covered everything all up um like i said that's that's in theory that's what i'm after but uh you know uh, i won't i certainly won't be adhering to that a hundred percent, but, uh, in, in essence, I will be. And like, like when I'm dealing with this area here where it's like the windshield, 
of the bus. Uh, you don't even really have to squint down, but if you do squint down, you see like I'm just going right through into what's beside the bus because there's literally, there's no value change there at all. And that's, that's right. where when people tend to use lines, they get into trouble because they want to delineate that edge of the bus with what's next to it when in actuality, it's really all just one flow through shape, you know. Again, the best reason to use a big brush and especially a flat brush, because with a flat, you know, you're uh, you can use the tip to get linear areas. But, you know, I, I try to avoid that. <clears throat> is, that is that a soft brush? It's a uh, hog bristle, Chung King. Uh, it's a Robert Simmons signet. Mm hmm. Actually, luckily, I found a place in Edmonton in Canada that uh, that I can get them from because I stopped being able to a law about because of like animal poaching or whatever. They uh, they made it so that any natural hair brushes I can't get, get really? sent in from the U.S. Yeah. So I wonder if that's about to happen in the U.S. Oh, it is. It is from the U.S. That's that's why they're uh, when I made an order from uh, Jerry's Artorama or whatever. Uh, it came without the brushes that one time, and when I phoned, they explained that's why it uh, that's why it happened. Yeah. Well, what I was wondering is whether or not we're going to end up not being able to buy natural hair brushes here. Okay, yeah. I mean, they are making better synthetic ones, but I really like the uh, I really like the uh, the natural hog bristle. Well, you know, I, I don't imagine people are stopping to eat ham, so it'll be interesting, you know. No, exactly. They're, they're gone anyway. Why not make good use of them? Yeah, that's <laughs> And, I mean, the amount, the amount that they use to make a brush, you know. It's, uh... So I'm still, uh, I'm still squinting down, and uh, I'm really mostly focusing on my my most extreme contrast areas like underside the 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 overpass there you know there's a it's a for all intents and purposes it's a black you know on on the value scale especially if if in my if my mindset is my value scale is is basically in the in the one to four range right now you know anything that's that's uh, quite dark. Like this whole area here would be considered a black in my mind, you know, even though there is some nuance in there. Um, you know, I might get to a little of it later, but for the most part, uh, you know, the painting's going to read a lot more successfully if I, if I, uh, oh, sorry, not the camera there. If I, uh, you know, uh, sort of average everything out and I, I, that's why I like to, you know, uh, when I teach, especially like, uh, especially drawing, you know, uh, the idea of uh, a four value, four value drawing where you have to decide, you have to commit, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's either a, a one, two or three or a four, which would be a white, a light mid, a light mid value or a, you know, or a dark mid and black. And, uh, because otherwise you're just carrying too much, uh, you know, the, uh, your value structure weakens when you start to like, you know, if you're, you're dealing with four and then you cut all that in half and you're starting to dealing with the, you know, the value between, between the light mid and the dark mid and, um, yeah. So I'm going to want to uh, like dive right into uh, to pure color very shortly. Um, I just want the uh, really the uh, my main structure and to to kind of hide the pure white that's that's here just for the sake of the sake of um, where there is going to be pure white. You know, if if you have if you have pure white everywhere, the areas that are going to be pure white aren't going to aren't going to stand out as they should. Is that uh, Queen Street in West Toronto? Yes, it is. Wow, I, we've got good listeners. They're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I thought you came up with that on your own. No, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, we have a big international audience. I'm putting some of them on the screen from time to time. Okay. This is a similar to the, uh, the tool I was just using, but it's uh, obviously a pointed one. So you can get nice little, pull out nice little shapes here of the reflections. And this is just a brush with, uh, with no paint on it. And it's, uh, but I, it can't be too, too soaked in, the, in my mineral spirits because uh, then I would just be getting explosions, you know. Um, and I, I don't want my purpose to use it just to be blending everything. I'm not looking to blend so much. Like I said, it's really more just to uh, to eliminate the harsh whites, so I can get a better idea of all my overall value construct. I love the energy so far; it's incredible. Okay, so now I'm going into my, and this is where I'm going to try to stay pretty faithful to my initial concept of I've mixed up these, I've pre-mixed up these batches. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be really mixing or even necessarily thinning much paint, you know, I just want to lay in like I'm laying in a patch here that's sort of the, uh, the mid, mid dark value on the hood of the car here. And now, and for the sake of like here, for the sake of like, there's a subtle shift between the hood of the car and the windshield where it might be like, uh, they're both mid values, but one's leaning a little lighter. But for the purposes of my squinting down, I'm going to treat it all as one thing here, even though I'm like, yeah, it's 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 a little bluer there, but uh, I'm I'm kind of ignoring reality for the time being. I mean, I may adjust that, but at this stage, I want to keep things as uh, as uh, unified as possible. Big blocks, blocks of shape. Sorry. Big, big shapes. That's right. That's it. It's all about shapes. That's the hardest thing to, uh, to convey, especially when teaching uh, more beginners. Um, you know, they'll come to a workshop with photos of, of a place that has sentimental value to them. But when I tell them there's, there's not really good shapes in it, they have a hard time sort of separating that, you know? Um, What is the black you started with? My black is uh, French ultramarine mixed with uh, transparent oxide red. No, tr transparent earth red. I used to use the transparent oxide red, which was the Rembrandt. But then I saw Gamblin was making this transparent uh, oxide, oxide or transparent earth red. And you can get it in bigger tubes. And it's actually even richer than... than uh, than the uh, the Rembrandt one. It's that was in Richard Schmid's book. He talks about that's a color that he was very uh, would use a lot. There's no no point in waiting around to get right into your. Uh, you know, your, uh, your biggest contrast in value and your, 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 you know, your most intense hues as well. Cause I see some, some real red warmth happening just on the underside of the, uh, the headlights here. So while I've got this going, I can start going right into what's on the side of the bus there. And because I've laid in my darks nicely, I'm, I'm very confident that I'm laying this in, you know, where it where it should be which especially when you're painting this directly you know any going back and having to fuss is only going to hurt the painting brilliant just brilliant and also right now i'm going to uh i'm going to go in with some pure white opaque pure white 
Um, what kind of white do you use? I actually use permalba white. It's uh, it's very opaque. <clears throat> it's made by Weber. Uh, yep. It's the only. I don't use any of their other paints. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not getting paid for, or I'm not getting. Uh, I'm, I'm not sponsored by any of the, any of the companies I mentioned. So. See, I'm still, even though I'm getting into a little more what would be considered detail, I'm still mostly concerned with the big planes, you know. So as I, as I turn the corner here on the on the front of the, of the the tro trolley car or the bus or whatever it is, um, and I'm even picking up this same color and value that's here, even though it's not necessarily that. But if I squint my eyes, it's uh, again for the sake of unity and uh, cohesion. Uh, you, that's, you just, you kind of have to like force yourself not to, not to fall for, you know, cause there are a lot of little things going on in there, but, uh, the trick is again, squinting your eyes and, uh, but it's not, it's not just, it's not just the squinting of the eyes. Like it's, it's a concept, you know, uh, that's why the, my favorite book of all time, uh, Charles Reed's painting what you want to see and the whole idea there is is that, you know it's about how you edit what you see um, and don't just slavishly copy everything you know it's, it's about uh, giving the painting what it what it's calling out for I thought I'd heard of every book, but that's one I've never heard of. I'm really, yeah, I'll, I'll be buying that one today. It's, it, they actually put it back into print. It's a, it's a, it's a gem. I mean, uh, I, I think in its day, it's, it outsold uh, like, and certainly in terms of what we'd be considered a, a, an instructional book, but it's, it's so much more than that. You know, it's, uh, is it R I E D or R E E D R E I D. He's one of the best watercolor painters ever, but it is, he, he teaches really more about principles and values and things, you know. He's a very good oil painter as well. Well, he actually passed away, it's probably a couple of years now. See, I'm sort of, uh, I'm sort of trading off between not lingering in one area for too long, but also when I'm there trying to get my shape as accurate as possible. You know, like, uh, I'm certainly going to have to go back and restate some things and, and tie some things up. But like, again, the, the, the overall idea of what I'm trying to get at here is, is, uh, as direct and fresh and, spontaneous like it, it's spontaneous in spirit but it's really not because i'm you know i'm being fairly careful and you know and i'm not working all that fast even it's it's almost like you know you're, you're trying to by working slowly to make it look like it was easy or something Paper towels, like one of the most important tools you can use just in terms of getting your surface back so that it's, it's, it's really ready to, uh, to accept paint, you know, without getting it all clogged up and, and, you know, especially when with oils, if, uh, you know, if you try to lay an opaque white or a light opaque layer over, say this red, um, it's, uh, it's really a fool's errand because you're going to end up churning up what's underneath, you know, and your, your white will just turn out to be a, a kind of wishy-washy pink. And uh, that's why in, in areas like that, especially if it's a small thing, you, you're going to want to go in with a knife and really lay it in confidently uh, and boldly. Here I'm see I'm, I'm just linking up shapes here, this dark here, and it goes right back into into that side, you know, if you, if you can, 
if I can really make the whole painting two pieces, you know, a light and a dark, that, that's, I know that's very simplistic, but it's, it's kind of got to be the mindset. Please, if you could, let me know how I'm doing on time every now and again, because uh, I, uh, once you well, get you've got, you're right, right now you have probably 30 minutes left. Okay. Yeah, you're doing real well. See, here's where I, what I call painting through. And sometimes it's hard, especially if you, you, you lay in an area that you, you, you know, you did some really nice brushwork and it's, it, you know, but like, uh, I'm feeling too much separation, you know, to me, the, the number one thing that I, that I warn against is, is you never want anything to look cut and pasted down. Um, you know, and that's what, that's the, the problem you get into when you're, uh, when you're concerned more with, uh, with what you're painting than, 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 you know, the shapes of, of what you're doing, because if you're concerned with, with what it is, then you, you forget you forget that it's really, you know, it's about, you know, it's the way I've just created this, this kind of flow through here. Um, it kind of knits everything together. Somebody asked what colors you use to create that blue on the car. Uh, I've got uh, manganese blue hue, uh, turquoise, and, and they're either Windsor Newton or Gamblin. I kind of use both of those. Um, and, uh, there's probably some of that, uh, well, probably some of my black, which is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, earth, the transparent earth red and the French ultramarine. Again, one of those is the, the ultramarine is Windsor Newton and the earth red is gambling. I was over at the, uh, old Holland factory in Holland. Okay, and, and they told me they were discontinuing manganese blue. It was a he's. They said that it was getting hard to source the actual manganese. I guess really. So I, you've got a hue, so that I guess that means it's been created from other colors. Yeah, it works fine for me. It's way cheaper. I guess yeah, it's uh, oh, yeah. manganese alone. Yeah, I like the ones that I can get in the big tubes. You know, because I work large mostly, and uh, uh, yeah. And it seems they're sort of phasing out the cadmiums now as well. Um, and actually, I found the Windsor Newton. I can get it in big tubes, and it's like a Series 1. It's as cheap as can be. It's just called Bright Red. And I tested it. I did color charts, mixing you know, mixing it with tints and uh, with shades and everything else. And I let it dry, opaque, and putting it on with a knife. And uh, I, if anything, it was a little warmer and brighter than the, the Cad Red. So that's what I use now. State the name of that color again. Just bright red. Bright red. Bright and that's red. that's a gambling color. Oh, that was Windsor Newton. Oh, Windsor Newton. Can you see okay. that? <clears throat> they had one. I think it was called Ferrari Red, which I think okay. is the same same one. Okay. Uh, it was it's very bright. Maybe they got sued by Ferrari, so they had to change it. <laughs> Never thought of that. See, I'm doing a little bit of blending there, but it's all mixing on the canvas. You know, I'm not, I'm not mixing any paint on my on my palette right now because I've predetermined. Uh, yeah. I'm loving this. This is fabulous. I think we're selling out Amazon on that book. Okay. <laughs> hey, you guys, pay attention and go to Amazon later. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having a cocktail party tonight online. Anybody who wants to participate, I'll give the... Uh, the URL later. 
but uh, that's why I put the booze up there. Yeah, I was wondering if you were starting to drink. Uh, uh, I'm start. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking early now. I start about <laughs> noon. That's a COVID, that's a COVID thing, I guess. Well, I'm going on vacation on uh, uh, this week, and so I guess I I could start early. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. That's right. I'm looking forward to having a week where I can just read. Yeah. Yeah, you've been doing this like every day, one of these every day, among other things, it seems. Yeah, this is day 337. Does that include weekends even? Oh, yeah. Wow. I did. Uh, so we do um, we do two a day. We do one at noon, and then we do one at 3 o'clock. Okay. Uh, I had a YouTube expert tell me this week, he says, I can't believe how much content you guys are pumping out. He said, nobody, nobody does that much content. <laughs> and uh, especially the length, because they're each an hour. Right. And uh, so I did the uh, uh, se seven days a week at noon for seven months. And then, then I stopped at seven months and I only do five days a week on this. But the other one I do seven days a week because I can pre-record the, uh, those. Right. See, here's an example of the opacity of the permalba white. Um, you, just, you, can't, you, go, you go pure or do you pure, add pure, pure nothing pure. added to it i don't use any medium i just use uh, odorless mineral spirits uh, to thin my paint but in a case like this it's just straight out of the tube i like that square palette knife you can really get control yeah, with that yeah that's uh See, the, the, when you're going for these like final touches, there's it's you don't have to wait till the end of the painting, you know, because um, I'm not going to be laying glazes over it or anything, you know, which would obviously, uh, which would obviously, uh, you know, churn all this up and destroy it. But um, when you're with the approach is like I said, the last stroke first, um, you're really just going for the essence, you know. Mark, uh, do you do workshops? Uh, you know what? I haven't. I certainly haven't done one in the U.S. since uh, since I uh, I was denied entry trying to go to Nashville. Like oh, that's got to be seven or eight years ago now. Um, yeah. Well, they can when once the borders are open, people can go to Canada to do a workshop. Yeah, it's true. I know. I really should. Uh, uh, or even uh, in Mexico or France or something too. I know a lot of people do that. But uh. yeah, Canada is very particular about letting people come in here and work. Yeah, we have a we have somebody we work with that's that's up in uh, Canada. Okay. Mark's website is marklagu.com. Am I pronouncing it pro correctly? Yes, you are. Okay. So again, any blending that's happening here is is mixing on the on the surface itself. So now I've got I've got all the brushes that I that I set aside of all those colors are, are in play now. So it's really, uh, it, it's, it takes a while in the, to, to set it all up initially, but once you're in this place now, it's just, I guess it's like what pastel artists do, you know, you're just picking up a stick, although they would have a lot more, a lot more uh, options. So you're not using, you're using one color per brush and just keeping that color in the brush. Exactly. And fairly, fairly like 
not not thin down too much, a little bit, just enough so that it's like like thicker than 35% cream, but not much. And again, I'm using this brush with no paint on it and very little mineral spirits. It's just slightly, slightly damp. Uh, not again, not so much for blending, but more just to just to kind of tie things together. The last thing I want is it for it to look like it's airbrushed or something, you know? Right. And again, I'm I'm constantly battling with not wanting to linger in one spot too long, but also, you know, once I'm, because I'm trying to do a real direct approach when I'm in that area, hopefully like, like I said, the uh, last stroke first. Cocktail party is at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. That way we can get after work for those in California. Uh, although I guess you're locked down anyway, so it probably doesn't matter. But so. Hello, Romania, India, lots of Canada. Is my mom on? Probably. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, tell us again the title of the Charles Reed book. Painting What You Want to See. All right. It's got a different cover, the new one I saw, that, but it's uh, it's been, uh, like I said, it's been all of his books, they, uh, they reissued. But that one was definitely the best. I'm trying to get another book done. It takes a lot of time to do these things. Yeah, I know, for sure. What did you mix to create the aqua green? Or is that a two? It looks to me like it's very close to the radiant green that Gamblin makes. This one up here, the green there. Uh, uh, I actually use permanent green, the Windsor Newton color. And uh, there's probably some turquoise in there and uh, some of the manganese blue. And maybe a little bit of the uh, the oxide the earth, the the transparent earth red, which just hmm. you know kind of neutralizes it a little bit. Okay. See, I'm trying to lay the groundwork here to state the cars in the distance there with as little little information as possible so that they read. Um, let's see about the orange part. Well, the, first of all, there's the coming from those cars. There's a nice reflection on the side of the car here that you definitely want to put in with a knife if you can, because to, to get that sort of sharp little shape with a brush, it, it's never going to be quite as spontaneous looking. So I'm just uh, mixing up this orangey color here to, to get it to the consistency that it's uh, just right for laying in with a knife. It, it, it you know, um, and not in the way I laid in the headlights on the car, because that was pure right out of the tube. This is a different thing where I'm uh, see, just laying these little thin shapes because th the bottom of these reflections, they're kind of pure white at the top, but the bottom of them is orange. So, you know, that, that's why I laid in this area with that mid value enough that these, these things will stand out just the right amount. And given that they're way back in the distance, I, I don't want them to be the, like the star of the show. Um, so then now I'm going to do the same what I did with the orange there with my white. So I'm using a knife the same, but I'm, I'm going to make up mix. I'm mixing up a little, a little uh, pool of, uh, of uh, it's just the permeable white straight, but I'm trying to get it to that same sort of 
Like if there was such thing as 40% cream, that would probably be the, uh, the consistency. You want there to be little imperfections in there, you know, just to, to feel the, uh, the unevenness of the road. And if I can get the headlights in there too, you know, I, I just want that to be, I, I don't want to get into the little, all the little, the, the license plate or the, you know. What is, what is your painting surface? Is it looks like it might be a board. It's masonite. It's a masonite panel that I double gesso, uh, with acrylic, acrylic gesso. I do that with like a very large house painting brush. So it, it gives a little bit of tooth to it. Now I'll do it one direction, let it dry and then do the other direction. I'll do that on like 48 by 48 boards and then cut them down. So that, that's, that I wanna be enough to say the distant cars, you know, that's uh, all in keeping with the sort of very direct painting approach. So you don't even have to paint a car in there. You just know it's a car. It's it. That's the, uh, that's the idea anyway. And there's some nice little reflections happening on the side here. If you guys are enjoying this, please hit the like or the share button. That would be helpful. Let's see, sort of working negatively, I see a, uh, to, to make this, this pole here, well, actually I'll establish the base of it a little bit. And to give the uh, give the feeling of there, that there's light coming from the sky, I'm carving it out sort of negatively here, but not fussing too much with it. I don't want it to be too blendy because it's you know it's a sidewalk. It's sort of a cobblestoney sort of sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So the, you want you want the paint to do as much work as possible, you know, like uh, without getting into you know, you, you want you want the detail to be an illusion, sort of. You just get a much uh, a much fresher painting that way, and like the lines of the sidewalk here, um, for sure, I want to put those in with a knife even scrape a little bit. So part of it will be, part of it will be darker, part of it might be lighter to give the feeling of a little bit of reflected light in there. You're getting a lot of praise in the comments. Everybody's loving this. Mesmerized, they say. Someone said, this is my new favorite. Have they started the cocktail party already? <laughs> well, you're a humble guy, I know. My family would beg to differ on that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I know, mine, mine would too. My wife will say, you're getting a bit he big head, take the garbage out. <laughs> I still have that painting you did of our lean-to at, at the lake. Oh, really? Yeah. Forgotten about that. Yeah, back then, uh, it wasn't even like a, I would take a picture of it on my phone, so I would still have a, an image of it, you know? It's, uh... I don't, could we even take pictures with our phones back then? Yeah, I don't think so. Did I even have a phone? I don't, uh, well, probably 18 or so years ago. Yeah. Probably had some form of a phone. Probably flipped. We are not. We moved. We're not on that property anymore. Oh, you don't, you're not in the Adirondacks anymore? No, we are. Uh, okay. We. My dad put his place up for sale. Okay. And it hasn't sold yet, to my knowledge. But um, we, we bought our own place about three years ago. Okay. 
and we're on an island. And so we bring our groceries in by boat. Really? That's really nice. Have to you have to bring the family down. We'll uh, we'll host you. Okay, I'll hold you to that. All right. There's, unfortunately, there's nothing to paint there. <laughs> <laughs> this is still in New York State, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're you know we're not far from you. We're probably an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, we're a, we're about less than an hour to the border of New York State. Here I'm carving around these. I, I wiped out to get it down to, you know, it's 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 a small value shift, but that's what I want for things that are that are secondary. You know, it's uh, I don't want this to take away from these lights. You know, right. but I don't want to over blend it either so that there's a, you know, it's again, it's about freshness and uh, simplifying. Now, are you going to leave that white as your sky or will you? Will depends you on, depends on the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but under normal circumstances, what would you do? Uh, like that's the thing, this sort of format where you're obviously time constrained. I, I do sometimes, try to do that to myself you know but it's hard to to stay disciplined enough to do it when you know you can always i can just add one more thing or i can work on it more in the studio whatever um so i did, like to answer to your question it's it's not something i would even even think about in advance you know that's that's but that's why i uh i uh i kind of go to like you know, while I'm while I'm moving around so as to not linger in one spot, I also am trying to bring each part to a finish as I do it. You know, mm -hmm. um, and because this whole area here is light and value, you know, I probably this is this is just the sort of uh, leftover paint on the brush that has no paint on it, but just to kind of push that back and uh, mm -hmm. you know, this, this brush I will put into the mineral spirits to uh, clean it off because, uh, but I'm, I'm making sure to. Uh, to get all the paint off of it or all the, all the mineral spirits off of it as I can. So that, cause if I took it right from there, from that jar and went onto my surface, uh, it would be a big explosion of mess, you know? Yeah. By the way, you've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, okay. uh, Z Lee says, how about an Adirondack retreat this summer? We have one. We have one in June. Uh, it's the 10 year anniversary of my Adirondack retreat. You can find it at, uh, uh, paint .com. Come on up. It's fun. And we already got 95 people coming. And what's the, what's the cap? Well, um, typically I can, I cap it at a hundred, but because it's the anniversary, I ask the, the college for more rooms. Okay. I can, you know, they've probably got 900 rooms, but, oh, uh, okay. but I, you know, I have to feed all these people. Yeah. You know how artists can be. Yeah, artists eat a lot. <laughs> but we have uh, we we have breakfast and dinner together every day, and um, and we sit up at night, play music, and uh, paint portraits, and uh, hang out in the bar. Yeah, I was going to say there's, uh, there's no drinking, is there? No, no drinking. <laughs> no, that'll be tonight. And then. Uh, uh, we take a sack lunch out with us. We make our lunch in the morning and we take a sack lunch out so we can be painting all day. Okay. When you say there's no, uh, there's no real good like scenery where you are now. I'm uh, joking. I'm oh, joking. okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's spectacular. Are you still on the water? Uh, yeah, we're on the water. We're, we our place is in on an Island. Oh, wow. And so we, uh, we get there by boat and we have a fabulous view. But I, I've got uh, a, a woods behind me and there's just so much to paint around me. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. 
I, I hardly left camp this summer. Of course, COVID was going on too, but, right. uh, you know, there's just so many beautiful scenery and trees and old boats, plenty to paint. In uh, normal times, how much time of the year do you spend there? Uh, well, now that the kids are in college, uh, we, we cannot spend enough time there. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we, we, uh, we typically will go in, uh, this year we'll go in sometime in late May and we'll stay. Um, I'm taking a trip of people to Russia in, uh, September and then I'll come back to the lake. Okay. Uh, and then I've got an Adirondack retreat again in the fall. I normally do it in a different place in the fall, but I was able to get this incredible old historic camp. Uh, to house us. And so I'm going to do fall color week in the Adirondacks in October. Nice. So I'll be there May through October. Wow. That really works. See here, I'm uh, cheating a little bit from what I, you know, uh, I, I actually let some of that color pick up off my brush and kind of, dance it along but like it has nothing to do with what i see here this is this is the uh, the painting what you want to see kind of approach you know um it just comes from experience and just just learning that sometimes you just gotta like throw caution to the wind and when you do this oftentimes you have disasters you know it's like yeah, but if you don't try, you don't get well, that's there. It. it was in the Nicolati's uh, natural way to draw book. He, uh, in the in the introduction, he says, uh, "You're going to make five thousand mistakes, so you may as well start doing it now." You know, so it's uh, people. You know, that was the one thing I found with teaching. Like people want to leave workshops with something they can hang on their wall. You know, and it's it's really hard to. Uh, to uh, convince them otherwise, you know, like uh, the importance of loosening up and not caring and doing a lot of beginnings. I've always people, stressed that. A lot of people go to workshops and, and then don't pay attention at all. They just want to paint with other people. Yeah, seriously. it's uh, The best workshop I ever took was with Frank Webb. He came to Montreal and did it at uh, John Abbott College. I mean, back then, I think there were 32 people in the workshop, which was too many for sure. Um, but he was such a good teacher. He's actually still posting work. He's, he's well in his 90s. I don't know his work. I'll look him up. He does, uh, he, he uses big, like three inch wide flat brushes and he does uh, like semi abstract watercolor, but it's, uh, he's all about design. He's a, he's just a great teacher. His hmm. book, Web on Watercolor was really great too. Do you do any watercolor? I, I initially only did watercolor I really mostly do it for fun now, but uh, it's it's a fun medium. I mean, it's you, you, that you, you you have to let it be boss, you know. It's uh, that's why I, I like to do sort of just you know sketchy stuff, small stuff. I don't I don't want to. I don't do like uh, really large realized works. We just did a an event called. Um watercolor live about three, four weeks ago. Okay. We had, uh, it was the world's largest art conference, um, online or offline. And, um, it was just fantastic. I learned so much about watercolor. It got me very excited about it. Now where we have a uh, plein air live coming up in April. Right. That's, that'll be your second one like that. Cause when COVID well, hit, I guess, well, when COVID hit, we 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 did Plein Air Live, then we did Realism Live because we had to cancel our fall figurative conference. Okay. Uh, then we did Watercolor Live. Now we're doing Plein Air Live again because we've had to cancel the Plein Air convention. Right. And we want to make sure people can get their spring training in <laughs> before they go outside. Where was it going to be this year? <laughs> Denver. Oh, really? Have you yeah. done it there before? No, we've tried for two years now. We had to cancel last okay, year. Okay, that was. Uh, and we can't go next year because we couldn't get the space. So next year we're go going to Santa Fe. 
Okay. <clears throat> you ever want to come, always... I'll put you, you know, come, I'll put you on the faculty. Just let me know. All right. Then my Canadian-ness might be an issue, but... Uh... <laughs> We'll figure out a way. Yeah. <clears throat> Bring you in by satellite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be down to the last couple of minutes. So we'll, we'll work on this just another couple and then we'll have you come on camera and say goodbye. Sure. Okay. This is fantastic. I mean, given given the the obvious looseness of this, uh, I don't, you know, uh, obviously there's so much more I can do, but uh, um, I've sort of like, you know, uh, in advance sort of accepted that I was going to be stopping well short of what would be considered finished. But, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of a value study, that's all I'm really looking for, you know. I mean, hopefully people can can glean some something from just, you know, I, I, doing a demo like this, at, at least it's, you know, it's showing the looseness of brushwork and what can be achieved through, through uh, you know, the, the most simple means possible. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful, though. Nobody expects to finish painting in this amount of time, but it's, it's fabulous that you've gotten this much progress. I'd say it's very, very close to being finished. I mean, that's it's always the thing. Like the, uh, you you get the things you get with a, you know when when you sacrifice a lot of the detail, you you know you can't get that any other way. It's almost a trade off. Uh, I remember posting something on Facebook where I was really happy. It was a medium largeish piece, maybe a. 30 36 whatever it was and it was uh but i did a block in a kind of a val you know uh it was like a watercolor in oils really but a very loose block in and i just posted it like that and somebody bought it like that it's like don't you dare do another stroke on that you know yeah well i'm sure somebody would buy this one You know, I love I love to buy demo paintings because I, that way I can remember the process they went yeah, through, exactly. even it's, if they're not finished. I don't buy many paintings these days with three kids in college. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. I think we're going to ask you to put the brushes down, come back on camera for a second. All right. Yeah. That is just that really amazing how that came together. Oh, thank you. So in, in case you tuned in just late, uh, our guest today is Mark Legou from Montreal. And his website, if you want to go check out his stuff, is marklegou.com. Ah, now we get to see your studio space. <laughs> that was my mistake. <laughs> That's nice. And uh, Mark, uh, you're in, uh, I, I want to say you're in Ray's gallery. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I would encourage anybody, if you like that style, go buy a painting. You know, COVID times, we can all use a little extra, an extra sale or two.